This is the story of how I created this lightsaber, and you can too. It has tons of colors and sounds, awesome pre-programmed effects, and a few more features you might find interesting. But anyway, on with the story. I've been guilty, in the past, of scrolling through saber shops like Vader's Vault, taking in the beautiful hilts, insane lighting effects, and ridiculous prices. I mean, $1,300? $1,300. $1,300. And I happened to be at Micro Center, which is where you go if two days is too long to wait. Sorry, Jeff. When I saw these, a quick car ride and 10 Google searches later, I realized that 60 LEDs per meter was not enough. I needed more, which meant giving Jeff Bezos $20 and waiting two days. But while I waited, I researched what else I'd need to make a $1,000 lightsaber for as cheap as possible. I wanted a gyroscope for detecting whether the blade was still swinging around or clashing, and a speaker to play cool sounds. Since Arduino boards don't have that much storage, I needed to be able to read a micro SD card, which would allow me to store lots of sounds and even different sound fonts so the saber could sound like Obi-Wan's or Vader's saber or anything else. And after experimenting with a few different speakers, I found out I'd need a driver board to make the speakers nice and loud. So to bring it all together, I selected the Arduino Nano RP2040, which has lots of RAM, a built-in gyroscope, and even Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, so we can maybe control this with a smartphone later on. Once the components arrived, I was able to make a prototype, but I still had a lot of work to do unless I was planning on lugging my computer around with me, I needed to fit a small battery into the hilt, but it had to be one that could provide the thousands of milliamps the LEDs needed. I also needed a blade to house the LEDs and foam to diffuse the light, so you couldn't see the individual LEDs. And this was where Amazon let me down. I couldn't find any lightsaber blades for under $30 and the battery and battery holder options were expensive too. To get these specialized components, I'd need a store that actually made lightsabers. And after looking at tons of different lightsaber stores, I finally settled on the Custom Saber Shop, where I discovered that the cheapest way to buy a blade was to get a 40-inch polycarbonate tube, a 40-inch diffuser, and 40 inches of foam, and then cut those down to a standard 32-inch length. And then I had an idea. I could take those 40 inches and cut a 30 inch main blade and two 5 inch cross guard blades. And all I had to do was get two more blade tips and find a Kylo Ren hilt. And after days of searching, I finally found one on AliExpress for $90. But the shipping, rather than being two days, was three whole weeks. But once it arrived, I had all of the components and it was time for the final assembly. By the way guys, I've got the code, the schematics, and everything else you need in the description below, so if you don't understand the assembly madness you're about to witness, just check those out. The first thing to do once I had the hilt was measure it and create a chassis to hold all of the electronics. The buttons needed to slide in and then stick up through the button holes. So I made the chassis on two different levels. A high level for the buttons, which could just barely fit in with them on top and then raise them up. And a lower level that allowed me to stack the three boards and hold the battery casing. Now the battery actually stuck off a little bit, but even with the speaker on the end of that, the pommel still just barely screwed on. Now that I had the design, it was time to solder it up. Now, the really interesting part was the blades. So the chassis had a connector so I could remove the blades, but since I had some extra connectors, I decided to make the cross guards one unit and the main blade a separate unit. For sending data to the LEDs, both cross guards were going to be doing the same exact thing, and for that matter, both sides of each cross guard. So I only needed one data wire in parallel to all four cross guards and that meant the Arduino only had to worry about 16 of those 64 LEDs. The two sides of the main blade were also doing the same thing, so I connected a wire from one of the cross guards ends to the start of the main blade. Now this is very important. Since the LED strips are wired in parallel, you need to make sure all of the arrows are pointing up 
toward the tip of the blade. The arrows show which way the data is going, so if you have the arrows pointing backwards, the LEDs won't get told what to do. When you attach the two LED strips for each blade together, back to back, you remove the cover from one of them and the cover and tape from the other. So there's a one tape between the two strips. Then you can solder the power and ground to one of them, solder the data wire to both at once by cutting a little piece of metal, folding it and putting it across the two data pads. And then you can take short wires and connect the ground from one side of the strip, ground is on the arrow side, to the other. And the power from the non-arrow side of one strip to the non-arrow side of the other. Once the LEDs were ready, I used a pipe cutter like this to cut down the polycarbonate tube. I cut the plastic diffuser with a hacksaw and the foam with a pair of scissors, and then I sanded down the ends of the blades, which flared out a bit, and the inside edge of the blades and the outside edge of the tips so I could hammer them on. And with the three blades ready to be assembled, I was almost done. Or at least, that's what I thought. You see, I'd gotten a battery that could supply 3.7 volts, which I thought would be enough for an Arduino board that supplied 3.3 volts. But the Arduino board actually needed 5 volts to run. So, with my 3.7 volt design all but completed, I was going to have to start over with a different power source. But then, all of a sudden, it hit me. Ow! A boost converter that could step 3.7 volts up to 5 volts. I found a tiny one that wouldn't cause any spacing issues, connected its three pins, ground to ground, V in to the battery's power wire, and V out to the power wire going to the kill switch, and now the Sabre could actually turn on. And the last thing left to do was insulate all of the exposed connections with hot glue so I wouldn't get a short circuit. Rather than making my own custom program, I found one called FX Saber OS, made for creating lightsabers with Arduino, and I modified it to use an RP2040 and an external SD card reader. I make it sound a bit easy, but this project took me multiple months, so please subscribe so I can keep bringing you projects just like this one. With the program installed, I could finally insert the chassis and lift it up so the buttons were accessible. I also made this insert to support the shelf that the buttons are on so it doesn't snap off, and I slid it down from the top. Then I screwed on the main grip and the pommel. I pulled the LED plug out of one side and connected it to the crossguard LEDs, and then slid the LEDs through before putting them inside of the foam and inside of the blades, because the blades don't fit through the hilt. For the main blade, I first put the plastic diffuser in the blade, and then slid the LEDs into the foam, slowly threading them in, and then slowly threaded that foam into the blade. Then I pulled the crossguard plug out the top, connected it, slid in the blade, and added a whole bunch of set screws. And finally, it was time. the story of how I made this lightsaber, but I want to make it as easy as possible for you to do the same. So I'm going to put together a kit with everything you need to make your very own lightsaber. Now the kits aren't quite ready yet, so if you want one, you can pre-order them through May 13th, 2024. And after that, I'll get all of the pre-orders ready, I'll ship them out, and I'll figure out how many more kits to make. But if you want to guarantee you get a kit, make sure to pre-order at sabercpb.com slash lightsaber before May 13th. And if you want to check out all of the features the Saber has in detail, I've made a tutorial on that right here. Or you can learn about how to get started making your own electronics projects in this video right here. Thanks for watching.